Let's take a look at an application of the binomial distribution. According to FlightStats.com, American Airlines number 1247 from Orlando to Los Angeles is on time 65% of the time. Let's stop right there and think about what that means. It means the probability of being on time if you're on this flight is 65.65. Suppose eight. Oh, let's stop right there. That's an important information. Information. Eight flights is the total number of flights I'm taking. Are randomly selected, and the number of on-time flights is recorded. First off, we want to look at why is this a binomial experiment. Remember, what's the key for the binomial experiment? There should be two. Outcomes on time, yes or no. Is the flight on time, yes or no? And that's all you have to think about, yes or no. Now, for the purposes of when the airlines do this, they do count early flights as being on time. They're recorded in the on time thing, so it's either on time and early, customers happy, or not on time, customers not happy. There are two events. What is the probability exactly for our on time? Well, let's go over to Excel and think about how we can do this. I'm going to write down some key information. The probability of being on time is 0.65. The total number was 8, just so we can remember. And I'm just going to help myself by doing some labeling. You can type in Excel probability of exactly 4 on time. This is a binomial distribution. I can insert a function and use that binome dist I've been using. There are four on time flights, four successful things out of eight flights total. The probability is 0.65. Five, excuse me, and the cumulative. Remember, I'm always you're always going to say is false or 0.175. Right. If you'd like that as a percent, well, I could turn this into a calculator by typing equal sign that value times 100. But an 18.75 percent chance that exactly four of them are on time. What's the probability at least? Now remember, at least is a key word. Okay? At least means if you have at least four, you have four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Four or more of them are on time. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself um, a little at least four are on time. I want to make myself a little chart. That could mean four of them are on time, five, six, seven, eight. Any number of these will meet that criteria. So I'm going to do each of these individually. Four flights out of eight with a probability of 0.65 and a cumulative value of zero. And I'm going to do this individually. Five flights on time, that still meets the total um, of at least. Six flights on time. Only thing that's changing is that first value. Seven flights on time. Oh, this is exhausting. But think about having to do it by hand. So I guess I'll appreciate Excel for what it is. And then lastly, eight flights on time. And to find the total probability, I want to add these all up. Remember, we can turn Excel into a calculator by hitting the equal sign. We can use the word sum with a parenthesis to add them all up. And close the parentheses. So the probability of at least four being on time is 0.781845. What is the probability that 
fewer than four flights are on time. Zero, one, two, or three. Now here's the catch. Um, remember, you can do a separate probability distribution. Point seven, eight, one, eight. And you could do a table just like that. And do 0, 1, 2, 3 and figure it out. Oh, I wrote that in the wrong spot. Sorry. That was the answer to that one. Or you could say that these two events are opposite events. The probability of four or more and fewer than are opposite events. If you were to fill them out, the first part of the table for this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and this is the second part, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Remember that the table must add up to 1. So since they're opposite events, I can go ahead and subtract the complement, right? 1 minus 0.7818. Or you may go ahead and um, do the individual table. 0.2182. between 4 and 6. So between 4 and 6 means I want to focus on just these right here. 4 and 6 flights being on time. 4, 5, and 6. And you can um, calculate the individual probabilities and add them up for 4, 5, and 6. But since I already have them, I'm just going to ask Excel to add just the 4, 5, and 6. I'm not going to extend it down to the 7 and 8 using the sum function. So I'm going to say add just these three um, cells, and that's my probability of between 4 and 6. Now, in order for showing your work sequences, you're, you can show this column, you can show, you can copy and paste this in right here, and then I could see what you added up. Between 4 and 6, if you want to show, I'm um, just explaining, you know, you added the 4, the 5, and the 6 together. That's enough work to give me an idea of where you're going. So I can see if you're making an error. And showing your work is so important because if you calculate one of these probabilities wrong by accident, um, maybe you put the wrong thing in Excel and you get 0.37 or something instead, and you for your next one you use that but you don't show your work and tell me what you're thinking, you just have a number, it could be you really do understand the concepts, you just made a stupid little math error back there. But if I don't know what you're thinking or see some explanation of where your number came from, I can't pinpoint what's going on. So be sure you have some work or some explanations to, um, to support your reasoning, whether it be explaining what you added together or showing what you subtracted from one. It doesn't matter as long as you do have some kind of explanation. So we did address um, all of those.